guys, I want to talk about a little something kind of personal today, I guess. <laughs> I haven't really touched on the topic like this in a good minute. Probably since way back when, when my views videos are starting to go viral and whatnot. I had a lot of views on those. I'm still surprised I got all the views <laughs> on those videos. Um, but anyway, today I want to talk about jealousy as far as parent-child relationship jealousy <clears throat> now I don't think I've mentioned this before but let me just start off and say that when I was a young child when I was young I was this is before any molestation happened when I was young I lived in New York as I talked about before I was born in New York and I was raised there until age 10 life was pretty normal around that time it was pretty normal I consider my childhood normal yeah we were poor but you know so was everyone else you know, my parents, you know, they were good parents for the most part. They did the best they could, except for when my father would, like, kind of spank me too much and too hard over, like, small things. And that was, like, the main issue I had, you know, um, and, like, certain other small things, but, you know, whatever. Basically, my child was normal. So, I say normal in the sense that me and my dad were close. We were close then. Um, <clears throat> he was just, like, a normal, any other normal dad out here playing with their daughter, you know, the firstborn, if you're, especially if your firstborn is a daughter, um, she's extremely clingy to you, and that's just how it is majority of the time, and that was me, I was a complete daddy's girl, I'm not gonna lie, I was a complete daddy's girl when I was young, we did a lot together, my dad was the one who started me on video games, my dad was the one, as I hear my own daughter giggling, <laughs> relentlessly in the background, um, my dad was the one who started me on video games. He was the one who, you know, first introduced me to video games when I was like five or six years old. When Sonic came out, you know, the very first Sonics and all that, all that other cool stuff. You know, he did what most dads do with their daughters. Very playful and happy and, you know, do all that good stuff. So, everything was cool back then, you know? Like I said, I was a complete daddy's girl for a long time. But after we left New York and new stresses came, new major stresses hit my parents and my dad was like off and on barely working because he's a mechanic and the mechanic industry is not very fair sometimes. They don't pay that well and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of issues. And I guess the stress just magnified everything because y'all know the deal when I was around 12, specifically probably 11 and a half, I'm not sure. Um, but not that long, not that long from when we left New York. Then he started grooming me. He started started this um, sexual grooming process when none of it happened before. None of this happened back in New York. None of it. Like I would have never imagined it would happen. You know, I was I wasn't aware of my dad's issues. You know, my mom wasn't aware. Nobody around us was aware of what was to come. Nobody saw any signs. You know, it it, it wasn't something that you could say, oh, I saw this coming. Except for how my family is, how that side, the Jamaican side of my family is really fucked up sexually. That was the only thing. If you knew my family, if you knew certain people in my family, you knew certain events, that was the only way you could probably pinpoint, uh, okay, you better watch this man, you know? So basically, when that happened, um, when he started grooming me with porn and videos and all that, I lost that daddy's girl touch. And for years, it's just... It bothered me for a long time and in the in-between years didn't really bother me as much as it does today and that's the weird part because I'm 34 years old now and all that stuff that happened back then it really affects me now because there are certain times and there are certain moments I wish I could go back to that time I wish I could contact him or I wish I could I wish it would be the way we used to be you know and I look at my husband's relationship with my older daughter, and I, I smile, but even with them me smiling, I get a tinge of jealousy. I'm not gonna sit there and lie and say that I don't, I get, um, it's not like, um, jealousy like vengeance, like her, I don't want her to have this, you know, <laughs> it's not like that, it's not like I do anything destructive with it, I don't, it's just, I just sit back and shake my head and, and wonder, like, why couldn't my life have been this way? How would I have been had I still had a proper father figure in my life? How far would I have gone? Um, yeah, I just wonder. 
Yeah, she's loud as hell, bro. I don't know if you can hear her. You probably can't because Jesus, she's so damn loud. And that's what I'm talking about. Every time she's playing, every time her and my husband are playing anything, she's just, she's a complete daddy's girl, you know? She's a complete daddy's girl. They're playing Legos right now, and she's just, they're all playing Legos together. All the kids, and the, yeah. <laughs> she's always the main one laughing. She's a lot like me when I was young. When I was young and careless, when I was a little daddy's girl, I was just like that. I used to laugh over everything. I laugh. <laughs> it might be a Pisces thing, because she's also Pisces, but either way, she was just, she's just carefree and happy and, you know, not believing anything is going to happen. And I miss those days. I miss those childhood days sometimes where I had both my parents and I knew they cared and I knew everything was going to be fine. Those days are so long gone, you know? <laughs> Uh, so long gone. So like I said, I get those bouts of jealousy to where, yeah, I look at my kids' relationship with my father and I just, I kind of cringe. And it oftentimes it's triggering because I made a post about this um, probably back in March, <clears throat> around the time my daughter did turn 12. <laughs> because, yeah, that's around the age where the grooming process was starting for me. So life for me was just getting shot. It was just getting shot to shit, and um, when my daughter turned 12, I had all kind of horrible memories, flashbacks, all kind of horrible thoughts, like, man, why? You know? I would have been <clears throat> so much better and happier and further along in life had that not happened, so. It's just, it's an emotional journey, though. That's why I will forever preach about this topic because child molestation is no joke. Do not molest your child. Do not rape your child. Do not touch your child sexually. Just don't, y'all. If you're having any of those kind of issues, go get help, please. I am begging you. Like, if you want your child to come out with all these issues that they have, you know, uh, mental instability, uh, job issues, can't function, bad grades in school, you know, hanging out with the wrong crowd, running away from home there's a whole lot of stuff kids could be doing you know because they're messed up sexually you know being promiscuous is just a piece of it but there's so many other factors and it affects you for life you know i really wish this did not happen to me because it affected me for life i'm 34 years old and i'm still going through a lot of these things i'm still having issues with you know those times I mean, that's just what it is. I'm going to be realistic about it. And y'all know this already, but largely the reason why I'm bisexual <clears throat> is because of my molestation. Because I had such sexual demons in my family. Still do. That's why I don't really hang with none of them. I don't really hang with that side of the family. I don't really talk to them. Not only have they all done me wrong, but no one wants to talk about the past. When I did try to talk about the past, everyone was shown to me, you know. I don't want to talk about it because it's such, so, such disgrace, you know, but how are you going to get over the disgrace if you don't talk about it, you know? That's just my deal, but no one, everyone is fucked in the head. They don't want to talk about it. The Jamaican side of my family, I, I just, I don't, I don't deal with them. They're screwed. They're adults. No offense to them, um, but... I know they didn't all get help for their issues. I know a lot of them themselves have been raped and molested, which is why they didn't help me when I came out. I mean, I have old videos talking about this stuff. Talking about, you know, my four aunts, I believe. None of them came up and tried to help me. No one talked to me. No one consoled me. No one tried to get me out of the situation with my dad. Nothing. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's that much of a shameful thing. And yes, I, while I understand the shame, you have to... You gotta own up to it sometime. You know, it's just... I can't do it. I can't live my life not owning up to shit like that. And not talking about it. Not raising awareness. That's just not me. Y'all know I'm a realist. I don't do that shit. You know, if something's bothering you that's that bad, you need to go get help. You need to let it out. Even if you're not able to punish the people who did you wrong, you still need to let it out some kind of way. Um, that's just how I feel about it. about it because yeah I do feel tinges of jealousy when you know my husband and my daughter are interacting and I just think back to my childhood days like damn damn <laughs> it's like 
if only we hadn't come to Georgia. I mean, Georgia, eh, I've been here a long time. And I'm kind of ready to go now, or at least ready to get out of this type, this particular area, but why? Just why? Why, why me? <laughs> you know, I was a good kid. You know, I was always that kid get bullied and whatnot. I had excellent grades when I was young. I was an A student, teacher's pet. I was called every name in the book, bullied relentlessly. I was a really good kid. You know, I had a decent life. I was a really good kid. I was going places. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a lot of things. And him doing what he did when I was 12, just... Yo, and I didn't have anyone else to run to. So... That's just my life right now, so... I'm just being realistic about it. These emotions are real. I'm going to accept them and I'm not going to um, brood on them and I'm not going to say that they're not real or they don't exist or something's wrong with me. No, nothing is wrong with me. I have a right to feel that way. I have a right to feel that my life was stolen because it fucking was. And I'll never get that back. I'll never be that same daddy's girl as I was back then. I'll never be that. I'll never have that. And that realization is sad. This is <clears throat> so I just want to tell you all that so if it ever happens to you don't feel so discouraged you have a right to feel that way like if you molested by some family member or you want anything you feel jealousy towards your own child because they get to have what you once had or what you wish you had those are valid emotions you need to sort those out don't do any harm to anyone don't cause your child any harm because it's not their fault don't take it out of them. <laughs> you know, just find a constructive way to deal with it. Find a constructive way to talk about it. Like I'm doing right now. This video is supposed to be constructive. If you can't talk about it on a video, talk to somebody or write it down. Sing a song about it. Do something. Do something constructive with those emotions. Don't let them brew because when you do that, it'll kill you. And trauma like that is a silent killer. It literally is. It really is, you know. <laughs> that shit will kill you if you don't let it out. This is just the truth. So yeah, within those jealous moments, I just try to busy myself doing other things and I just smile and I remain happy for them. I have to be happy for my kids because I brought them here. And I'm very well happy that I chose the man that I chose. Or else I'd be going through more turmoil. I don't want to go through more, more turmoil. So yeah, I'm happy for that. And working on my emotions and working on how to process these these things and this is one way to do so letting you guys know what's going on because these are real things this is what happens to molested people this is what happens to abused people these are the things that happen you know these are the emotions people don't talk about so. yeah i believe that's it i believe i said everything that i needed to say I hope you guys are having as great of a day as I am. I'm just chilling here drinking my coffee while the kids are playing and taking their showers one by one. Um, yeah. I believe that's it. I hope you guys are having a great day. Sick. Wait. Let me know how you feel in the comments. Write your opinions, comments, situ situations, experiences, all that down on the bottom. And we can talk about it. Um, let me know how you feel about what I said and yeah thank you for watching wait no I hope you guys have a great day second hour minute month and decade thank you for watching